I like having the kids in here. Amen. Was that Mikey? That's my son. <laughs> yeah, he's clapping. Hey, you guys need to learn. He is excited. Ryan, get excited. All right. So the last few weeks, we've just been taking time to honor people that serve in our church. As I've said before, uh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. If your name's not called in one of these Sundays, we've tried to do this throughout the year in different ways. And we're going to continue to do that where we just want to give honor where honor is due. And just to be able to bless people that are serving in a lot of different ways. And this morning, we thought it was fitting to bless some of the people that served our children and made all this come together. And uh, we appreciate so much their hearts uh, for being a part of this and helping wrangle the cats to get ready for this program, all right? So uh, first, I just want to uh, notice two different people. They kind of come as a pair, but I'm going to notice that give, you know, want to thank them separately, and that's Tom and uh, Clarkson. If some of you don't know Tom and Misty, they are, I would say, eh, recently uh, joining our, our family here, but have jumped in and have served, and uh, that's awesome to see. Uh, we are so appreciative of what you guys have done, not only with this program, but Tom, you serve on Wednesdays, and all the ways you guys serve. It's refreshing to see you guys just get involved, and so just wanted to be able uh, to thank you and, and bless you this Christmas season. And thank you so much for working with our kids. So I'll just give them both to you. You can decide whether you want to keep the other one. And, you know, yeah. Okay. The next one is Kristen Moreno. Kristen, where are you? There you are, right back there. I see her. Kristen, thank you so much for your heart. Uh, she was involved last year too, weren't you? And this year, and she's been a blessing as a part of this family. Uh, we, we actually really got blessed because we had Jason in the coffee shop, but we got double the blessing when he decided to marry Kristen. And so we're so thankful that Kristen, if you haven't gotten to know Jason and Kristen, If you haven't gotten to know Jason and Kristen, get to know them. They're one of those power couples that you want in your home group because Jason is a chef and Kristen's a baker, so you really get blessed when you have them a part of your lives, and so get to know them. Uh, the next one is uh, my sister Sarah Farron. Thank you so much for your heart and continually working with our kids and what you have done to put this all together. We appreciate you very much. And Let's see, and let's see, we have Amelia. Where's Amelia? What's that? Yes. Huh? Amelia, come here. Okay, don't come here. You just, we'll give it to mom, but thank you so much for helping and, and serving, and we appreciate it very, very much. All right, thank you so much. All right, and so this morning, because I am not an idiot, I know that we have all the kids in here, and so we're gonna give just a short message that I wanna be able to speak into their lives, and so if you want to, in your most organized, chaotic way, if you wanna come up front and be with me, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna share a message to any of the kids that want to, you don't have to, but you can come up here and sit down and chill out. Hi. You can be all across the front. You don't have to just be on one side. Michael Foreman came. Nor. Michael's actually gonna help babysit. Yeah, yeah, huh? All right, you have to sit down though to listen. You have to sit down to listen. All right. Anybody else? Oh, we still got something coming. All right, and if any of them end up running back to mom and dad during this time, that's okay. We're not worried about that. But listen, right off the bat, you gotta do me one favor, okay? If you want to, we're gonna start out by playing a video. Can you guys turn so you can see the screen? Can you turn and see the screen? All right, we're gonna play a video, all right? And then we're gonna, I'm gonna share something that God put on my heart for you, all right? Can we do that?
I told Megan that we want confetti cannons in our next worship service. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, we, and we need like 72 more drums. Okay. All right. One of the dudes looks like Willy Wonka. Hey, I agree. All right. That's why we have you guys a part of these services because you notice things that none of us do. All right. So why would I play a story of the little drummer boy? Does anybody know the story of the little drummer boy? Some of you, some of you don't. I'm, I got my back to the adults because they don't matter right now, okay? They do, but we love them, but I want you guys to hear this, okay? The Little Drummer Boy was a story, a song written a long time ago, and it was about a little boy who was on his way, or just a common boy, and got invited by the Magi, or the, the wise men, to go visit uh, baby Jesus, to go see baby Jesus, all right? And so he goes along for this visit to go visit baby Jesus, to see the newborn king that the wise men were telling him about. I'm a little hot, guys. If I could be brought down a little bit, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the mic up. <laughs> All right. So he was invited to go see baby Jesus. But on the way, because he was just a normal boy, do you know what he began to feel? 
He's like, oh no, I, I don't have a gift that I could bring to a king. I don't have the money. I, I, don't, I don't have the gold. I, I don't have anything to give to a king. I'm just a, I'm just a normal little boy. What could I ever do that would be good enough for a king? And so he began to feel this. And so he gets to go visit baby Jesus. And all he had was his drum because he loved it, right? And then he asks Mary something. He says, can I play my drum for Jesus? And I wanted to ask you something. Have you guys ever felt not good enough at times? Or not smart enough? Or not strong enough? Or maybe whatever it is, all those different feelings and lies that the devil wants to tell us. I'm, maybe I'm not cute enough or, or handsome enough or, or whatever it is. But those are the lies that the world wants to tell us. Have you ever felt that? Yeah. I think all of us have felt that at one point in time or another. You know, how, how could we have something or do something good enough for a king? Because that's who Jesus is. How, how could I give something that would be a good enough gift for a king? You know, I don't, I don't have enough money to buy Jesus a, a gift that would be good for a king. But what's awesome is, is I don't have to. What, if we shift gears just a little bit, what was the amazing, most awesome gift that Jesus gave us? His life. Yeah. Can you believe that Jesus gave us his life and came to this earth as a king knowing that he was going to lose his life for you and I. Isn't that awesome? And you know why he did that? Why, did G, why, did, why would Jesus come to this earth as a king, as a prince, and, 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 and give his life? Why? Because he loved us. Because he loved us, that's right. And he knew that by giving his life, that we wouldn't have to do something good enough or buy something big enough to give him a gift. That our belief in him as our king, as our savior, was all that he ever wanted. And he made you, made you the way he wanted you to be. He created you. And so if we go back to that little drummer boy story, he looks at Mary looks at Mary and says, all I can do is play my drum. Can I play my drum? And the song tells us this is what it says. That Mary said yes, and he said, I played my best for him. But rum pum pum bum All right? I played my best for him. Then, guess what? The song says, Jesus smiled at me, me and my drum. All I had was my drum, and he says, Mary, can I play my drum for baby Jesus? And she says, yes. And then he says, I played my best for him. And he smiled at me and my drum. Do you know why Jesus would smile at you? Do you know that as you go through life, as you go to school, or you're home with mom or dad, that when Jesus looks down on you and he sees you, he looks down on Mimi and he sees Mimi and he smiles. Do you know why he smiles? Why would Jesus smile at you? Because he loves you. Yeah, he loves you so much. And when he looks at you, even Zara running around, he looks at Zara and he smiles because he created Zara. Zara is his daughter. You are, listen, when he smiles at you, he doesn't see your mistakes. He doesn't see some of the things we're learning. He sees his child, his son, or his daughter. And when you love him and live your life in him, it's all that you ever need to do for him. You're handsome enough, you're cute enough, you're strong enough, you're smart enough. Oh, we, we saved. We're good. We almost lost one. We're good. Cole, Hillary, she was caught wherever you are. <laughs> there you're good. <laughs> Listen, he is smiling at you and he's telling you, I created you the way I wanted you to be. And all he wants you to do is to live for him. And if you focus on being you, 
the you that he's created you to be, you don't need to listen to any of the lies of the world or things that are said at school by someone who's having a bad day. Those are lies from the devil. That's not who God created you to be. Do you know that in 1 Peter 2.9 it says this, but you, meaning all of us, his children, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Do you know that you are God's prized possession? What is a prized possession? If I have a bunch of different things and I tell you that's my prized possession, what's it mean? That's my favorite thing, that's right. And when God looks at you as his children, he says that we are his prized possession. Do you realize that he's saying that, that he loves you even more than the beauty that he's created? Like, like think of the Grand Canyon. Who knows what the Grand Canyon is? How big it is, how beautiful it is. Do you know that God's saying, listen, that's beautiful, that's really good. I, I really like what I created there, but when I see you, you're way more beautiful to me. That's what God's saying, is that you are more important to him than anything on this planet. All right? And I just want to encourage you, as you are growing up, as you're going to school, as you're learning all kinds of new things, if you focus on one thing, and that is remaining in relationship with Jesus Christ, listening to his voice, learning to listen to his voice, talk to him, reading the Bible, being in relationship with him. You don't have to worry about anything else because he's going to be with you at all times. You know why I know he's going to be with you at all times? Be Thank you, Michael, for asking why. Because he promises us to be with us. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. That little drummer boy said, all I have is my drum. And Jesus says, that's what I want you to play because that's what I created you to do. And if you do your best the way Jesus has created you, you don't ever, ever have to worry about whether you have a gift that is good enough for Jesus. Your praise, your belief in him is what he desires. And that's awesome, isn't it? Isn't that great? Some of you are really excited. Some of you are just like, listen, I know there's cookies out there. Listen, I want to personally thank you for all of your practice and all of your time that you came and you, you got ready to share with us. Because listen, Jesus loved hearing you worship him. And I want us adults to do one thing. I want us to get on our feet. And I want us to give them the biggest round of applause we could ever give them to show them how much we love them.